As is often the case in political campaigns, some issues get a lot of press that probably shouldn't, like Bill Shorten's mum. And then there are other issues that deserve more attention than they actually do get. One of those, I believe, is the Labor Party's radical new policies on all things gender. Remember, in Tasmania this year, a bill was passed to make gender optional on birth certificates. Now Labor wants to make that a national policy. Here's Peter Credlin with that and other details from her show last week. Push in Tasmania to remove gender from birth certificates. Now, if you have a little boy or a little girl, you have to apply for that to be noted on birth certificates in Tasmania. The assumption is there's no gender on the birth certificates. Well, Labor has a national platform that wants that sort of um, gender change uh, right across the country. Now, we'll put something up on screen so people can follow it, but there is a Human Rights Commission. Um, in the Human Rights Commission, they want to see a Commissioner of Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity. They want a national gender centre, whatever that is. It's not clear from the documents. And that the cost of gender-affirming medical technologies should be reduced, which could well mean a heavy Medicare subsidisation for gender reassignment surgeries. Now, I don't know that most Australians know that this is on the table. I don't think most Australians, in, or sorry, most Tasmanians certainly knew in the recent state election that gender change was on the agenda for that state either. On the gender reassignment surgery issue, here's the exact wording in the policy document. Labor acknowledges the right of all Australians, including transgender and gender diverse people, to live their gender identity. For many, this includes accessing specialist health services and for some people can involve gender affirming medical technologies. Cost should not be a barrier to accessing these services. Labor commits to removing wherever possible barriers to accessing these services and consulting with experts in government. This should materialise in a focus on creating fair, equal and affordable access to medical care and treatments relevant to trans and gender diverse Australians. Now, is that something you want to subsidise with your tax dollars? I mean, if, as Labor asserts, you have the right to live your gender identity, does that mean a trans woman can get breast implants subsidised by the taxpayer? And what if she then decides she wants to change back? Will that procedure be covered? Now, the Labor Party national platform policy document is 310 pages long and makes for some interesting and disturbing reading. For example, on page 244, the Labor Party proposes addressing gender superannuation inequality, in which they assert, on average, women retire with 47% less superannuation than men. This is a national disgrace and institutionalised gender discrimination. Of course, that's complete nonsense. There's nothing remotely sexist about superannuation. The more you work, the more you get, regardless of gender. It's that simple. Now, of course, I'm not mentally ill enough to have read through this 310-page document in its entirety, but one man that has read the fine detail of Labor's gender agenda is this man, Professor of Paediatrics John Whitehall of Western Sydney University. He appeared on Credlin on Monday, and I encourage you to listen to the end of the interview because it just gets more bizarre as it goes on. This is a really important issue. I have to say, other than a few comment pieces in the newspapers and you bravely coming and speaking about it, I think most Australians are concerned um, but don't know the detail. No, I couldn't agree more. And you talk about the platform. The platform is not a suggestion of what they're going to do, it's a promise of what they're going to do. And part of that promise is that they will have a nationwide safe schools program, which is in fact, in my opinion, part of the problem because the, under the issue of bullying, and nobody approves of that, uh, they are raising this ideology that there is no fixed identity as a boy or a girl. Uh, but the children of the working class exist somewhere on a flexible rainbow, some kind of a locus in between. And that uh, if a child then expresses confusion and uh, the delusion that the boy might think he's a girl, they have promised that they will make it illegal for a doctor or a therapist or a counsellor or whatever, illegal to do anything but to direct and support uh, the child in the direction of the new gender. So it, can, I, can I just jump in and ask you, so, so if you have a child who's, say, seven, who presents and says, 
I'm a boy or I'm in uh, what I would call a tomboy or, or a boy who thinks that they might be a girl, rather than perhaps involve counselling or, or a psychologist, as the parent, as the paediatrician, what you have to then now support that choice of the child at seven or eight or five or whatever it might be to change their gender. Am I right? Yes, indeed. You are right. This is the issue. They use the weasel word conversion. In other words, you are not allowed, it will be illegal, forbidden, at the pain of deregistration or whatever. They were actually going to criminalise it, but thought that they could make it more effective if they used civil laws to prohibit a doctor, for example. Um, they use the word converting the child back to the gender with which it was born. So that wasn't my idea of a conversion therapy w was very different than that, but that would involve just something as simple as counselling and doctor. Oh, well, exactly. That's all that they used to be, and it was very, very effective. And indeed, throughout the world, the statistics are that the majority of children will, in fact, revert to the gender of birth. Now, some along the way will end up as homosexual, and, and I can understand the uh, homosexual community is saying that transgendering these children, making them ersatz females in the case of a boy, uh, is in fact uh, gay genocide. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Mm -hmm. And Zucker, who was an international export in Canada, was basically sacked. Um, his unit was closed down for, for, for observing that surely life as a homosexual was less complicated than a medicalised, surgicalised, castrated, lobotomised, uh, transgendered child. For that, he was closed down. So, so tell me about the, the risks here, because um, the, the operations to change gender, going into the medical, surgical world, but, but obviously also all the hormone treatments, as so many of those are irreversible on, on young people, um, you can't come back from a mastectomy, you can't come back from genital um, surgery. H how much of a risk is this? Would we be making those decisions on young people under this policy? Well, we already are, and this is another weasel word. You mentioned mastectomies. Mastectomies are allowed by the law uh, under the concept that they are reversible. This is nonsense. They're only reversible in a cosmetic sense because of silicon bags. Mm -hmm. It's got nothing to do with breastfeeding or everything. That's what gets under my skin, is the dissembling, the massaging of truth, the, the telling of lies. For example, before the surgery, there is the blocking of puberty with, with various mm -hmm. drugs. Huh. They say this is safe and entirely reversible. People are taking no notice of the sustained research which has been done in Glasgow and in Norway, which has shown that if you give prepubert or peripubertal sheep the blockers, their limbic systems are altered, which is the integrating behavioural, emotional, coordinating centre of the brain. The bit of the brain that would help you work out whether you are male or female is irreparably damaged by blocking with the computer, with the, the, the blockers. A hundred genes upregulated, a hundred genes downregulated. The thing, the, the whole business gets pathologically bigger. Mm. And the sheep, huh, no, any surprise? The sheep is more emotionally labile and has a bad memory. I don't know how they test these things. <laughs> I'm not good at sheep, but all this is there. All this is there, and it has been repeated, and yet. The pundits arguing for the transgendering of children saying, ah, it's safe and effects are entirely reversible. This is not true. But who, what parent wants their child to be an experiment, a gender experiment? Ah, well, there are indications. For example, in the past, um, there was an Australian psychiatrist named Kosky who was head of psychiatry in Western Australia. And he reviewed the cases from 75 to 80 and published them. There were eight cases only eight. Now the same hospital gets two or three a week. Koski um, basically put the child in a hospital and with a dramatically short space of time, the child gave away or gave up on this hypersexualized uh, feminine behavior, mostly their boys. He came to the conclusion that this was a symbiotic 
uh, relationship of pathology between the mother and the boy in this case. Okay, she's hardly done by, by males. Uh, she doesn't particularly get on with the little boy, finds that life is easier when he's in a dress. He finds that when he's in a dress, mum's eyes light up and it goes on from then. So that's part of it, family psychology, and it was treated by family and individual psychology. This goes to the point we started the conversation on. If somehow under these rules, and you're right, they're not a nice to do that we could think about doing, they are mandatory if Labor comes into power, it's part of their platform. Um, psychology in these discussions and counselling before these big radical decisions are made is gone. So too, I understand, is us even talking about things. <laughs> yes. I hope you enjoy this because it's the last chance we have. If Labor get in, it has promised in the platform, not my platform, that they will regulate broadcasts. We won't be able to have a cynical conversation on this so-called conversion therapy. It will be banned. They promise. But this is the concern I have. You know, I, I've worked in politics for a long time. We're, we're trying to go through in an election campaign and discuss these issues, policies right across the board, so that the voters have a chance to look at them and be informed when they go to vote. No one's really talking about this issue. And you're a paediatrics professor. What you're saying tonight to parents at home watching this would be pretty alarming, to say the least. I, I don't know why it hasn't been raised. You know what? In Victoria, they have basically said this conversion therapy will be illegal. And now, not now, they reversed the onus of proof. And nobody seems to care about that. They say that you are guilty, uh, the doctor, therapist, will be guilty until we can prove innocence. Nobody seems to care that this enormous fundamental of democracy has been traduced down there. Now, Hennessy, the uh, health minister, this is, this, it's, in, well, it's all in Hansard. Mm. There's a paragraph in Hansard. You need a couple of PhDs to understand it. But at the end, she basically says, yes, this is not a human rights issue. We have reversed the onus of proof, and it's important now. So... All sorts of things have happened without comment. Well, Professor Whitehall, thank you very much for coming on tonight and at least uh, informing people at home a little bit about what's at stake in the next few weeks. More of this and you'll get me struck off. Well, me too. <laughs> Do you what if they legislate that we can't have a discussion? There you go. It's not the Australia I grew up in. And that's one of the more frightening parts, the possibility that you won't even be able to discuss these issues. As Credlin says, that's not the Australia I grew up in either. Between the current government wanting to jail internet trolls for five years and Labor not allowing you to even discuss certain issues, I think it's more important than ever to consider voting for a minor party, especially in the Senate, so some of this proposed legislation can be stopped dead in its tracks. As usual, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you next time.